Zoom, can you hear us? Zoom, how about now? Can you hear us now? Yay! Hey. Right, so can you make sure that they can hear you. Shabbat Shalom. We begin as we do each Shabbat with song, with music, with joy. Please join with us. We begin with Esa Enai. Oh, 
Turn ahead in our prayer books now to page 26 and join together in the Hatsi Kaddish. in body or spirit. I want to hear somebody pray. I want to hear somebody 
shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternal Egypt, Egypt, that there, there is, is a better place, place the promised land, land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there, there is, is no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands, marching together. Page 40.
as we pray together this Shabbat, we are aware that our world continues to roll forward in violence. It seems hard to imagine 19 souls, young souls, lost. But even since then, there have been multiple shootings in multiple cities. And so as we gather and we celebrate this Shabbat, and as we turn to the words of Hashkivenu, let us return to the sense of connection that we know we must feel, not just with those who are like us, but with those who are oh so different from us. All of us are deserving of blessing. All of us are the mirror image of holiness. All of us, all of us are holy and worthwhile in our own way. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up, waiting to do your will. Baruch atah Adonai, haporesu kat shalom aleinu, ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim. sight than children singing and dancing. We continue with the Shana, page 44. Thank you. 
turn the page, we invite everyone to rise in body or spirit as we join together in the evening to feel off. Oh, yeah. 
upon our hearts or the words on the page. When you're finished with your prayers, you may be seated. Can you hear me now? There we go. Okay, this is your, you're going to start off with repeating out the That's why I was like, where are you? in the midst of our worship and celebration to pray for those in need of healing, whether the healing is of physical healing or spiritual or emotional healing, we pray for all of them. As a congregation on this Shabbat, we especially pray for Samuel Kaplan, Stan Cardoza, Jerry Ann Morgan, 
Michael L, Stan W, Howie G, Miriam Fruma, Ruth Goldman, Alan Wolk, George Gurneth, Kathy Lowry, Shirley Goldstein, Ann Rockwell, Jerry Spargle, Shirley Spargle, Lauren, Bob S, Eve, Katie, John, Ken Bleacher, David Allen Roth, Manny Gordon, Ruth Dudley Carr, Sheila O, Alex Bodkin, Jack Glasser, Judy Moyer, Susan Horn, Pat Fields, Lynn Fields, Jamie Adams, James Adams, Harava Fryan Ben Eli, Mayor Ben Eliezer Rifrado, and on the Zoom, Lori Rizel, Joey DeLuca, Matt Milanic, and Gert Lewis. We pray for all of them as we join together in singing El Na Rafana La. These words come from the book of Numbers we are in now. Um, they come a little bit later in our tour reading cycle in a few weeks. El Na Rafana La. Please God, please heal her. Is Moses' prayer, the first prayer we have for healing? We offer this for everyone who is in need of it. <laughs> Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, healer of the sick. And now a moment to share good news, birthdays, anniversaries. Who's got something good to share this week? Somebody must have something good going on in their lives. I got a new puppy, and she is the cutest puppy I have ever seen. And if anyone wants to see, they can see photos and videos on my Facebook account, Carol Rosa. What's the puppy's name? Blossom. What kind is she? She's a mostly Chihuahua mix. One eighth your and So she's going to be a big dog. No. <laughs> she's adorable. Who else does something good to show you? My son Ethan is home for the summer working at the Jewish Chronicle, and his first article went live a couple hours ago. Who else has something good to share? We are getting ready to go on a vacation. We're going to Ireland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
if we were having a great year, we would all be willing to go with you. We'll make our way. My lovely wife, Laura, and I have been about to celebrate our 38th wedding anniversary. Awesome. We're expecting our first grandchild in September. Yay. Who else has good things to share? We're expecting our second grandchild June 18th, nice. and we're very excited. Very nice. Uh, Carol and I are leaving for uh, Canada on Monday, and then the following weekend we're going to be in Israel with uh, Lynn Dale. Hand back to Lynn behind you there. She's got the yeah. Someone told me she's going to Israel too. Right. So uh, we are leaving on Sunday to go to London and see our youngest son, who we have seen since Thanksgiving. That's pretty exciting. And next Shabbat, at this time, we'll be with the present in Israel. Very nice. This week, Bob and I celebrated our 53rd wedding anniversary. Samuel is home. Oh, yeah, he's healing. That's something worth celebrating. I'm getting ready for two concerts, and my stage fright is finally diminishing. <laughs> I got a photograph of Patrick. Nice. And it was a park, but I still like it. Nice. I think you want to go to school all year round. Are you sure? I don't know. So my cousin Jean is visiting from New Hampshire. Welcome. Hasn't been here for a long time, and my son is running his fourth marathon on Sunday. Wow. Day time best fall. <laughs> You didn't teach him to run? <laughs> we'll get to you guys in a second. Okay. You got something good to share too? It's your mom's birthday? Well, happy birthday. Many happy more. All right, Charles and Lexi, come on up. You have something special to celebrate. Wait, do I get to share my good news? No, we're coming, we're coming. I don't know if the band, anybody in the band have nothing to say? The band has tattoos. We'll get there. So, since, since there are so many uh, house related announcements a few weeks ago, I thought I'd share that I signed papers on my house in Tacoma. So, I'm very excited about that. And my house here is sold and will close at the end of the month. So, I'm very excited about that. Things are falling into place. Good. I'm just happy to be here with the band. Here in June, so I've got to next to my pal, Cal, and Paul, and Janice, so we're having a good time back here. My grandson, Neil, will turn three tomorrow. Rachel and our mates, our boy, will in Virginia. Bob, are you celebrating an anniversary too? Good <laughs> <laughs> <Denial? laughs> So in a couple of weeks, Charles and Lexi are going to be married. And this is a wonderful wedding, not just because two beautiful people are coming together, but because two cultures are coming together. Come on over here. Charles, if you talk to him, you'll hear his accent doesn't quite sound Pittsburgh, uh, but it is from a city of bridges. He's from Auckland. And so there might be the theirs might be the only wedding that has both a Hora and a Maori, how am I going to pronounce this? Haka. 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 And he'll show us in a second what a Haka looks like. <laughs> right? It will take a couple of drinks, I think. Go right ahead. <laughs> so we offer the two of you a blessing for a long life, a life of health and happiness. Mishamerach, Avotainu, Abraham, Vesara, Yitzchak, Rishpav, 
Yaakov's Rachel and Leah, the God who blessed Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob, Rachel and Leah, bless Hatan and Hakala, this groom and this bride. May you both know long, full lives. God, guide them on their life's journey. May their marriage be a joy and a good example to all who know them. May they fashion a Jewish home worthy of praise, a secure refuge where they find tranquility during all their days together. May the love of this couple inspire and bless their family, their friends, and the whole community of Israel, and for that matter, the whole community of New Zealand too. Yes. And we say together, Amen. Thank you so the chuppah will be raised in a couple of weeks, but we can't wait to celebrate with you, and we're thrilled to celebrate, to have this joyous time together. Thank you. So Mazel tov to both of you. We continue on page sixty-two with Ose Shalom. <laughs> Some of the stress of moving comes from having to figure out how to get all of your stuff from one place to another, especially with gas prices when they are. And even when boxes are well labeled, half the time you don't know where anything is. And of course, you realize that you need something that's been packed already. And then you get to your new home, and things don't fit the same way. And you have to change things around, and it's all different. Much of the stress of moving comes from the change. The Torah does give some guidance for how to make a move. If ever there was a good parsha for talking about long distance moves, this would be it. Whether you're following the diaspora Hebrew calendar and reading Parshat Bamidbar, or you're following the Israeli calendar and reading Parshat Maso, the Torah includes a great deal of instruction about preparing for a move. First, make sure you know how many people are coming with you. Then assign them, right? You need to know how many people are coming with you. Then assign them tasks. Make sure the right people are entrusted with packing up your belongings, especially the valuables. 
identify who should carry everything along the journey, give the unpackers details about where everything will go upon arrival and how to set up the new home. All that's in the Parsha. And then once all of these details are arranged, recognize the difficulties and uncertainties and stress of such a loop and ask for blessings on the journey. No matter how good or important or necessary a mood is, there will always be challenges and we can always use some extra blessings. But before I give others the opportunity to bless me on my journey, I want to offer you some lessons and blessings. Usually I do this for other people, but I'm just going to get started now. First and foremost, you, the congregants of Temple Sinai, are the lifeblood of this congregation. Everything here happens because of what you contribute, and what you get from Temple Sinai is correlated to what you put in. And I don't just mean financially, although monetary donations always help. At its best, and I have seen this community at its best, Temple Sinai is the epitome of chosen family. The people here will celebrate with you in times of joy and will support you in times of difficulty and sorrow. This congregation has sustained so many people in just the seven years that I have been here. I've seen B'nai Mitzvah, where the sanctuary was filled with congregants as well as outside guests. On those occasions, the sanctuary reverberated with song as congregant and guest alike celebrated the new status of one of our young people. I have witnessed the tears at yard sites of beloved congregants whose loss is still felt because they're not in their normal pew or in their normal seat at the table. We have folks who continue to support their surviving family because of relationships that were built over the years. And I've seen the rallying of support when someone has needed an extra hand, a ride, or meals after an injury or surgery, or when they've needed household goods in the midst of a crisis, or even just regular phone calls to prevent isolation. And that's not even including all of the support that I received after you all was born. We at Temple Sinai are good at this work, thanks to the many leaders and volunteers in the Rafa Center. And we are always more successful when we know who you are because you participate in the life of the community. In Parshat Naso, the only people who are counted are the Levite men from 30 to 50 years old. But in this community, everyone counts, no matter how old or young, regardless of gender identity or expression, with whatever your abilities or disabilities, everyone is important to this congregation. But between the way COVID has changed gatherings, clergy transitions, and new people coming into our community, we don't all know each other. We want to know you. Please make yourselves known. This, this community and this congregation will be stronger and more blessed because of your presence and your gifts. And we will be better able to support you and offer you blessings. Second, shower the support staff with love. They are the people who get things done. During our Parsha class last week, and we could have continued talking about it this week, we discussed how the Levites, with their elevated status, do the work of carrying, arranging, cleaning, and displaying the items in and for the tabernacle. This work is essential, and it is designated as holy. Moses, Aaron, and future leaders of the Israelite community would not be able to do their jobs without the work of the Levites. So the Levites get a place of honor and a portion of the Israelites' tithes. In 
contrast, in our society, the people who do this work often get the least credit, the least recognition, the least honor, and typically the lowest salaries. They are also often the ones who bear the brunt of people's frustrations when things don't go as expected. But I can tell you, without a doubt, I would not be able to do my work as well or as efficiently without the support of staff, especially people like Judy Mahan, Debbie Haber, Tammy Prime, Judy Aiello, Aaron Robinson, Sanjay Guru, Rodney Harrison, Colleen Burke, Sunshine Figlio, Leslie Fleisberg, and last but certainly not, certainly not least, Drew Bartley. They make us look good. And they don't have discretionary funds, nor do they get regular opportunities for you all to appreciate the work that they do. Debbie and Judy Mahan, especially, are my right and left hands, my eyes and my ears. In their honors, this is a surprise to them, I'm glad to use the money in my discretionary fund to provide the seed money for a youth scholarship fund and a bunch of provide rides for those who can't drive. They will be named in their honors. Each one of our staff brings such blessing to our community, treat them with honor and support, and I know this community will continue to be blessed. I also, need to th I also need to thank a few important people who have supported me over my tenure here, especially as roommate mentors. Rabbi Jamie Gibson, who gave me the model of a kind, generous, and thoughtful congregational leader. Rabbi Daryl Crystal, who showed me how to support a congregation in transition. And Rabbi Dan Kalman, who has encouraged me not to take things so seriously. I also want to acknowledge the board presidents who have guided me, supported my ideas, and encouraged my creativity. Rick Towson, Nancy Gale, Philip Lehman, Saul Strassman, and Alice Lee And finally, to my friends and cheerleaders, Jeremy Burton, Lynn High, and Bree McDonough. Thank you for your support, your love, and your willingness to jump in to make sure that I was honored and thanked. I appreciate you more than you know. Change, whether it's journeying across an actual wilderness, moving across the country, or just transitioning from one set of leaders to another, is stressful and challenging. Temple Sinai has been through so much transition over the last few years and is still dealing with more. You are, for all intents and purposes, in the wilderness between two places, what has been and what will be. Luckily for this community, I can say so myself, what has been has been a wonderful place. You have fond memories of the various people who have served this community, I know I do. We and you have built a terrific congregation, one that I was excited to join seven years ago because of what came before me, and one that clearly I am sad to be leaving now. In some ways, though, that's what makes the change even harder. You're not moving from something terrible to something better. You're moving great from great to hopefully at least as great, if not better. My hope is that you keep those memories of all of the great people and experiences close and keep your hearts and minds open to what will come. I know that all of the changes that are happening will bring blessing with them but I also know that there will be challenges. I hope that you will respond to those challenges with compassion and respect and grace. I hope that you will be able to turn the challenge and stress of change into blessing by being instruments of blessing. That is what we read about in Parshat Naso. Adonai May God bless you and keep you. May the light of God shine upon you, and may God be gracious to you. 
is that when I when I left that is and left Hashem, may God's presence be lifted up to you, and may God grant you peace, and may you be able to walk hand in hand towards the promised land. Can you hear my song? When I arrived here just about a year ago, Rabbi Gorman looked me in the eye and said, you ready for all of this? And she had Yuval with her that day. And I looked at her and I said, well, I'm ready to play with Yuval. That's for sure. And Yuval, he brought me a challah. That's right, my first day was a, a Thursday and that first Shabbat, that first Friday, we had a homemade challah from, from Rabbi Gorman. And Yuval and I hit it off that first day. We played together in my study and over the course of the year, we've had lots of good conversations about, I'm going to get this mixed up again. I used to call it a bobcat. You call it a... Skid steer. Yeah, that. It's a skid steer. It's a bobcat. It's a horse. It's a mule. It's a horse. Mule. horse. No, it's a Kleenex or a tissue. <laughs> what Rabbi Gorman did for me on that very first day and throughout this year was to introduce me lovingly to all of you and to show me the beauty of this congregation up close. I can't begin to recount the number of times I've called and said, Karen, walk me through this. How is this connected to this person? Well, privately, it was Karen. Publicly, it was Rabbi Gorman, but privately, it was yeah, Karen and Dan. Right now. <laughs> I know, I know. But in that moment, in those moments of those advice and the, that instruction, you became more than Rabbi Gorman for me. You became Karen, you became my friend, my colleague, my partner. And I am forever grateful for all that you did for me during these last months. I know it hasn't been easy. I've tried to do it with a smile on my face, and I know you have too. But more than that, I want you to know how much of a profound influence you've had on this community. This congregation has the hallmarks of everything good you bring to the rabbinate. It shows off your willingness to study, your willingness to learn, your willingness to include, your willingness to sing and celebrate. All of those blessings that you carry are now a part of this congregation's history. And we will forever be grateful for all that you have given to us. I want to call a few people who are going to add to the blessings. Let me begin with our president, Allison Yezer, who will share some words. And we'll continue from there with a member from Watts, uh, and then from our disability group, and then from a few special folks who have blessings for, for Rabbi Gorbin. Allison? Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Rabbi Karen Gorbin has meant so much to so many of us. In thinking about how to capture Rabbi Gorbin's seven years with us and all that she has given to Temple Sinai in just a few words, I thought about three attributes that I and likely all of you associate with her. First, you're a scholar. From your very first interview with us, it was very clear that you were deeply engaged in your studies of Judaism and beyond. It is well known that one of your favorite things to study is Leviticus. And I was looking for some relevant quotes for this evening, and it turns out that in a top list of Leviticus quotes, yeah, there aren't many very family friendly. Quite a few of them deal with laws for keeping kosher, for offerings, for sats, and for death. Sometimes one is a penalty for the other, actually, but that's for another day, or perhaps fodder for another sermon. I was very happy to see that Leviticus also advocates philanthropy, teaching, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Which brings me to the second attribute, teacher. You have worked so incredibly hard to introduce a new way of teaching to our school. You and we call this next door. Of course, it's a clever play on generation to generation, teaching our children, but it also connotes a new way of doing things and being creative and that we are also all next door neighbors in the community here at Temple Sunday and beyond. You have been a dedicated teacher yourself in the classroom and on the BIMA, delivering many heartfelt and personal sermons. One I've taken to heart is a recent one reminding us of the Torah's concept about letting the land rest during the seventh year. Wise advice about taking an occasional break. And finally, I mentioned the line from Leviticus about loving one's neighbor. Rabbi Gorman takes this to heart herself. She has been a source of shared joy and of comfort in our good times and bad. Many of you, and myself, know how comforting Rabbi Gordon's words and presence have been in the worst of times of our lives 
after the loss of a loved one. It's impossible to overstate how important that is to all of us as individuals and as a community. Caring for us in times of need is perhaps the most important thing possible. Of course, there are so many more things I would like to say. I'll note in passing your amazing technical and creative skills, for example, many sets of visual tefillah projected on the wall, but I want to be sure to leave room for others. So keeping these in mind, these admirable qualities with which you have enriched our congregation, please join me in thanking Rabbi Orvin for all that she has done for the past seven years and in wishing both you and Yuval the very best in your next adventure as you move to Tacoma. But we know that no matter where you are or where you go, you will always be a part of the world. It is now my pleasure to turn it over to Carol Wolford, the president of the Women of Temple Sinai. We'd like to thank you for your seven years of leadership, teaching, and passion that you have brought here. On behalf of Women of Temple Sinai, I would like to give you something to start you on your journey. And it is a gift certificate, it's a gift membership to the Children's Museum of Tacoma. And we hope that you and Eval enjoy many happy times there. Good luck on your future and may you have a wonderful adventure. Thank you so much. I don't, I, Carol, I don't know if you, if you all know this, but I have gotten repeated recommendations for the Children's Museum, that it's one of the best museums, of children's museums in the country. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, you've got that. Well, the Bracha Center would not be the Bracha Center without you. We hatched a lot of plans around your round table. And the Disability Task Force, we wouldn't be anywhere near what we are if you hadn't hung that mute um, mezuzah on the door with me. Um, we have done some amazing work together. But on my personal note, sitting on a bench in Children's Hospital with you while my son lays in bed will always be my strongest memory of you. Because you just sat with me and you were just there. And I know so many others of you feel the same way. The Disability Task Force is sad that you won't be honored with us in two weeks. We will miss you. But before this last JDM, we went and looked for a gift for you that you could take everything that you believe in and brought to us with you to Tacoma. And I think we did a great job. So we found this bag that says justice, equality, diversity, and inclusion. And that is pretty much the thing. Makes me a Jedi. Exactly, but there's more because we couldn't decide. <laughs> so this one says, if you can be anything, be inclusive. And finally, cause this was just too cute for words. We got you this really cute water. Thank you. And more importantly, there are notes in here from different members of the cast for you to read with a box of mix. Rabbi Gorbin, we have two gifts to give you on behalf of the congregation. The first is a bit of a classic. You are going from one home to a new home. So what better symbolism than a mezuzah to bridge that gap 
a little something from your old home to adorn uh, your new home. May it do so in blessing and in peace. We picked out this one in particular because it is made of glass, and we thought that might remind you of the many stained glass windows we spent so much time with here at Temple Primer among them. And two, as you saw, it has a bit of a uh, bit of a rainbow flare. And as we just heard from Mara, we thought that was fitting for all you have done for Temple Sinai when it comes to diversity and inclusion and belonging. For the second gift, we put out a call. We asked people for their favorite Rabbi Gordon stories, memories, well wishes, and we received just an outpouring. And we have assembled this outpouring into an album for you, uh, along with photos from over the years, uh, Magazine of Temple Sinai archive of photos, but also photos that people submitted themselves. And when I say that we received an outpouring, I mean that in two ways. First, in volume, to be sure, there's a lot in there. Also, an outpouring of just emotion, an outpouring of spirit. The album is full of stories from people you have taught people who have helped, people who have been moved by your acts of kindness. And so from Temple Sinai, collectively, we want you to know that you have, that your time here has mattered so much to so many people. You matter so much to so many people. And you are so deeply appreciated and loved. And so from all Temple Sinai, Thank you, Rabbi Gordon. And now we welcome Rabbi Jamie Gibson. Is this on? Not yet. Is this on? Give it a second. Okay. Testing. Oh. Testing. I'll wait. Make sure it's on now. This one works. Okay. This one works. Oh, no. It's not on. Oh, you're not going to let this move between us? No. I will need it. When I first saw that you were wanting to come here, I looked through your resume, and there was this young woman standing in front of a sequoia. And I said, she's so small. But you were never small. You have one of the biggest hearts I've ever encountered in all of life, not just Jewish life. You've been a blessing to me and to my family. You welcome guests at my Shabbat table. You've taught me that when you speak quietly, sometimes people listen more. You've taught so much to so many, not just by your Torah, which is incredible, but by your neshama, which is overflowing, your soul. As you said, we have two different Torah portions that we celebrate in the Jewish world. That threefold blessing you gave, which I'm going to give to you in a minute, talks about three things, shmira, protection. And we wish for you to have protection on your road. And the new road that you shall take with Yuval, your family will come after us to help you be there. The second blessing is about or light. Not just the light of God upon you, but the light within you. Everybody who knows you sees that light come through your eyes. You are such a blessing to give your light 
and we hope for protection and light upon you every place you go. And as you well know, shalom does not just mean peace, it means wholeness and fulfillment. You have a sense of not just striving, but fulfillment as well. You somehow have managed to balance both, wanting for you to be better, wanting for us to be better, and always seeing us as a possibility, having the possibility being fulfilled. We wish for that blessing upon you, that you find shalom, not the shalom of stasis, but the shalom of fulfillment that just leaps out of you like a fountain. Protection, shmira, light, or shlema, shlemut, fulfillment. May you be blessed as you've been such a blessing to us. May God bless you and keep you. May God cause God to shine on you and in you and be gracious to you. May God lift up God's presence to you so that everywhere you go, you find love, and joy, challenge, fulfillment, and most of all, peace. And know how much we love you. Amen. Now, your job right now is everybody's stamp, okay? So you know this song very well. I've changed it a little bit. The chorus is, Amen, Amen, may this be your blessing. Amen. If you know the song, you can join in. Nine C here. I'm not. I have to play. Play. Play C. You bless as you go on your way. You will be guided. In
A few brief announcements this evening. First, thank you to our greeters, to Susie Hopman and Elliot Ashri for welcoming all of us so lovingly here. Our musical program is made possible with the generous support of an anonymous donor. Our own egg this evening is sponsored in celebration of Lexi and Charles and their upcoming wedding, as well as in celebration of Rabbi Gorbin, and we appreciate all who are part of that celebration. Tomorrow morning, Torah study is at 8.30, and it's still in Leviticus, I believe, yes? Not only still in Leviticus, but still in Kedoshim. Still in Kedoshim. Are you going to finish Kedoshim before you go? Maybe. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. And then the Shabbat morning minion will take place at 9.15 with a special oneg to follow to celebrate Rabbi Gorbin. Tomorrow evening, our confirmation dinner will take place at 5.30. Our Arab Shavuot service and confirmation service will begin at 7 o'clock here. Uh, and then the annual community-wide Tikkun Leil Shavuot will take place at the JCC in person beginning at 10 o'clock p.m. There are three sessions at 1 at 10, 1 at 11, and 1 at 12. Um, and I'm teaching a, a round in the first block, the 10 o'clock block. Um, and so I look forward to joining together with members of our community uh, and with all of you as we celebrate Shavuot and study together. Sunday morning, our Shavuot morning service will take place here uh, along with uh, Rodef Shalom. And both of our choirs will be participating in the service, so it promises to be a wonderful music cel musical celebration. Uh, we'll also be marking Yis Kor, and we'll conclude with a Kiddush lunch right afterwards. On Tuesday the 7th, Rosh Chodesh group will be meeting. If you have questions, ask Lynn Lazar. She'll be able to give you the details. Uh, on Wednesday, Parsha HaShavua at noon, and in the evening, meditation with Rhonda Rosen at 6 p.m. Uh, next Friday evening, our Shabbat service will be a special Pride Shabbat in celebration of Pride Month, and so we look forward to celebrating together. And next Saturday morning, we have the Bat Mitzvah of Lior Blitzstein, and so we look forward to that celebration. And next Saturday night, we have next in our movie series called Shiva Baby, uh, which is a 2020 comedy uh, about a bisexual Jewish woman caught between her sugar daddy and her ex-girlfriend. And you were concerned about things being family friendly. <laughs> I hear it's a great movie. <laughs> we return to our prayer books now. Uh, one last word. The Oneg this evening is taking place out in the corridor here by the memorial plaques. But if you do get a chance, look back in the auditorium and you'll see much of the artwork that's on display. Uh, in preparation for the Open Doors celebration of the Jewish Disability Awareness and Inclusion Task Force, uh, there's some beautiful artwork that's been done by members of the task force and by members of our community. Please do take a look to take a minute to look through it. Uh, it there's some really exquisite pieces there. I think the owning is outside. Oh, that's right. The owning is outside tonight. I take that back, which means we're in the Rose Garden or out the front this way? Out the front this way. Great. For now, we return back to our prayer books. We turn to page 586. We invite everyone to rise in body or spirit. Which is 282 if you're using the black number, but you can use it also. <laughs> Pause now to recall those who have come before us, those who gave us life, those with whom we shared life, those who taught us. We recall those who joined together to create this congregation and this community. This Shabbat, we mark the yurtzites of Erwin Harold Edelman,
Helen Danovitz Berenfeld, Malik Gitlin Bitensky, Sumner Edelstone, Sidney Fields, Adele Pachersky Fried, E. Dale George, Rebecca Goldman, Norman Grossman, Lena Herr, Rima Herzbrun, Sarah Holstein, Ellen Weiss Kander, Carolyn Kane, Lee Kaiser, Maurice Quasser, Bernard Lazar, Jack Leibowitz, Eva Levy, Melvin Lilienthal, Pauline Lipnick, Herman L. Lishkoff, Melvin Myers, Louis Ostro, David Perlstein, Arlene Rosenberg, Goldie Safir, Ada Ratner Sehud, Nelly Schneerov, Stady Schwartz, Rita Seltman, Julie Silverstein, Estelle Smith, Ralph Salo, Sam Salo, Harry Tansky, Creighton Wheeler. And to those names, we add the names of Susan Aubrey Eichler, Louis Ostro, John Burns, and those who have died just in recent weeks, Estelle Carlton, Fern Meadowcroft, Rosalie Slavings, and just this morning we learned of the passing of Robert Gelman. Bob's funeral will take place in the state of Washington in the coming days, uh, and Rabbi Sarah Perman will be officiating at that funeral. Uh, but we remember and honor Bob. We join together as we rise as one community for the Mourner's Kaddish, page 294. Yitkadal, yitkadash, shemei rabah. Ve'almah the <laughs> Yehe Shlama Rabba Mim Shemaya, the Chaim Alenu Vial Ko Yisrael, the Imru Amen. O Sesh Shalom Bim Ramav, Huya Sesh Shalom, Alenu Vial Ko Yisrael, the Imru Amen. May God grant comfort to all of us and to all who are bereaved, and together we say, Amen. We conclude this evening with song just as we began. You'll turn to page 11, you'll find the words for Ela Hamdalibi. Thank you. 